trust in the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sanctuary. We are glad you have joined us this morning. First time visitors, Sanctuary Zoomers. I noticed Keeley Tyson has come all the way from Chicago to join us. <laughs> and all present here on this Memorial Weekend, which honors all the military who have died serving our country. And now, if you are comfortable, feel able, Please stand for the call to worship. In mystery and grandeur, in earthiness and the ordinary, in heights and depths, in life and death, let us praise God together. Amen. Now please remain standing for our first hymn, Ancient of Days. Oh, 
First reading today is from Psalm 29, the voice of God in a great storm. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. And now, if you feel comfortable, please stand for our next hymn, Eternal Light. Quiet my 
Gracious God, we pray for the church. Help us to ask who we can be for each other with curiosity. With every gesture, bring us closer to understanding the universal truth that speaks louder than our differences. We are built from eternal value and loved without caveat. Thank you for the work of the church toward deeper acceptance. When we look into each other's eyes, we pray to only see belonging. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for our world. Despair feels easier than hope. When the nights are long, give us dreams of radical compassion. Fill our homes with stories of simple kindness. Come alongside us as we allow our rags and fear to animate our bodies toward justice. We pray for the mourning, the frightened, the downcast. May your love cover us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering. Our life stories reveal your presence and your mystery. May we be willing to touch the pain of our own hearts to lead other to the core of their being. We pray for vision beyond our own horizons, eyes lifted toward the narratives that reach back into the beginning of time. May we see joy and sorrow, not in opposition, but as two sides of our human experience ever in tandem. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have departed. The work of grief never done. Give us a gift of recollection of memory. When we can stand it, fill us with hope. When it's time, allow us to feel wonder as we take stock of the joy that springs from our lives. Your love is louder than our sadnesses stretching across the landscape, softening everything that it touches. 
We pray all these things in the name of transcendent Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our second text today brings us to Paul's letter to the Romans, the eighth chapter beginning in verse 12. So then, brothers and sisters, we are obligated not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if we in fact suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Well, you know, it's really not that kind of a meeting. So instead, I'd just like to welcome you all and thank you for coming. We have a big job ahead of us, and so it's good that we're getting started now. It's good that we're going to take some time and kind of lay out our agenda and our plan from here. You probably didn't know what to expect when you signed up for the committee to coordinate the family reunion, but the, today is all about establishing those kinds of details. If you've ever been in a meeting with me, I almost always have a pad that looks like this, which is full of numbers and arrows, and uh, it, it's enough to guide us through what I think we need to do. It is a holiday weekend, so I promise that this meeting will be brief. The amount of relief that just went over about half your faces is uh, so noted, <laughs> so noted. We're going to go over the basics, the basic things you ask when you're putting something together. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. That sound OK? Oh, good, because that's, that's all I have. So who? Who should come to this family reunion? Who is on the guest list? Who is on the guest list, and how will we invite them? And when we invite them, how will they respond? When we invite them and they respond, will, will we meet them at some kind of a table and say, I'm sorry, what was your name? And go through and register folks as they get here. Maybe it's best, maybe it's best if we just publicize the event. If we just say that it's happening, and if people come, they come. That's not as simple as knowing the numbers. That, that's not as simple when you can Google food for 40, no, food for 400, no, food for 4,000, no, food for 40,000, which I imagine is a Google search that would merit some kind of response. But it's a challenge that I think we need to take on, because who gets invited to this? I'm not sure that that's really our first priority. It's the first question that we ask today. But, but maybe it's best to remember that last week was Pentecost, and that Pentecost 
caused 120 disciples to welcome 3,000 new people when somebody who'd never preached before in his life preached, and suddenly there were baptisms for hours and hours and hours. So maybe the who is a little bit bigger than our agenda for today. But when people come, well, when people come, what will we do? When people come, what will happen? I apologize, I missed an arrow, so I'm going to back up to who for just a second. I like watching Henry Louis Gates and Finding Your Roots. Anybody else watch that? Oh, good. I had a, I had a hunch. One of my favorite parts is when he says, so did you know that you have history in Bolivia, Siberia, whatever the case may be? And then he says, turn the page. And they turn the page, and there's gasps. And, and there's, there's head shaking. And then my favorite part, when somebody picks something up because they want to see it up close. Really? She's with me? This is my family? So as we think about the who, let's think about those experiences. Those experiences of turn the page. You don't know what's going to happen next. I'll watch my arrows and numbers from here. What should we do? Well, we're a Baptist church, so we probably want to start by talking about food. But let's wait. Even though it's our instinct, even though it's one of our spiritual gifts, the gift of hospitality and potlucks, let's, let's hold that for a second. I've read some articles getting ready for this because, you know, if other people have made mistakes or had successes planning big family reunions, maybe we can learn from them. One of the key things that somebody said was that you should have activities that you should have some things organized so people can participate. Now, one of those things was the idea of a talent show, that maybe we should have people get up in front and share what they can do, what they know. I thought about that, though, and the problem with a talent show is that it usually winds up with a winner. Oh, I liked the way you juggled five balls, but he juggled seven balls, so he is a better juggler than you, but singing is harder if you're dancing too, so, and then we end up kind of stratifying people. Maybe instead of a show that divides us by what we can do one better than the other, maybe we could have a time where people stand up and they share something that they can do and they teach it to the rest of us. You may never have experienced this before, but I know how to do this, and I want you to be able to do it too. I think the idea of education over competition makes a lot of sense. If we're going to play games, and I like playing games, I was a youth leader for a long time, I, I know a lot of games for groups of all sizes. Maybe not 40,000, but, but, but if we're going to play games, rather than them being a competition, I would rather see them be things that are about cooperation. Let's work together to figure something out, because you all are experts in one thing, and you all are experts in something else, and if we can get you together, you'll be that much better, that much stronger, that much wiser, that much more capable. None of us have to know everything. Okay, food. We've waited as, as long as we can on an agenda at a Baptist church meeting, so let's talk about food. I'm thinking that we should keep it simple. I don't think any one of us are, are able, maybe willing, but not able, to cook for everybody. So, so perhaps it makes the most sense if, if we go potluck. And, and with that, I think we should focus on maybe a traditional meal, 
like bread and fish. I understand that that can feed a crowd in the right situation. When I think of bread, certainly I think of this table, and, and not this table so much, but what we do on it, what we will share on it next week. I think of this chalice and this patent. It's one of the few fancy seminary words I haul out every once in a while. It just means plate. But uh, the chalice and the patent, they are beautiful. And I'd like to know more about those. But, but when we had communion every Wednesday at McCormick Theological Seminary in Chicago, I speak Chicago, yeah. Well, it was hosted by whoever was on the worship team. McCormick had more students from Korea than they had from America. We had international students from all over the world, and so part of what was interesting was at the beginning of the service when somebody would come out and put down the bread for communion for the day. Rice bread, for example, comes in the most amazing colors, and sometimes it would be what, <laughs> what we sometimes called, no offense, Dave, cups and cubes, which was the white bread cut up for us and and the small cups laid out for us in polished brass or silver. We, we experienced it in so many different ways. I remember loaves that were, that were hard. And when the officiant would say, this is my body broken for you, it took everything she had to tear that loaf in two. Bread comes in lots of forms. What we say when we think of bread isn't the same thing that everybody else thinks of. Taking communion with tortillas and, and rice bread and challah and, well, and wonder bread. And because I've been in youth work for a long time with graham crackers and juice and wine, and in a one particular youth group ski weekend, unfortunately, Mad Dog 2020. <laughs> so we should let people bring bread of choice. Maybe we get to share. Maybe we get to try something we haven't tried before. Or you know that the bread that you need because of your particular needs, maybe you have allergies, maybe you have uh, concerns in your diet, then you know what you need is there as well. And then, if we bring water, well, we know that that might mean that some of us might drink wine. Are we good with food? Really, we only need one kid to bring his lunch, five loaves and two fish, and we can do all kinds of good. Now when? Most of the articles posted on the interwebs today about reunions are posted recently because it is a summer. And so that's, that's a good time to gather family. You can get together, you can get outside, you've got a decent chance that it's gonna be good weather or maybe you find a pavilion. But for us, is this a gathering that we want to limit to a particular time or place? Is this something that we want to say is going to happen from here to here, and then it's going to be done? If we limit things, well, well that might not work for everybody. If, if we limit things, if we say it has to happen here to here, well, then some people may not be able to attend. So maybe, maybe we need to make it more of a drop-in opportunity. If when could limit us, then certainly where could also. We probably, as a committee, would pick a time that's familiar to us, like, you know, now, where we're all here 
already. And we might pick a location that's familiar to us, like, well, here. Especially now that Glenn and Bill have uh, figured out how to ventilate this place for the rest of the month of June. It was great yesterday for the wedding, by the way. Noticeable. But just because this is a good time for us, just because this is a place that's familiar to us, we, we may not be able to offer that in the same way to everybody else. So we may want to think beyond these walls, beyond this hour that we come together. I guess part of what I'm saying is we don't want to make a plan where we expect everyone else to do it the way we do it. See, Scott Moore has taught me in new ways about the freedoms that we have through our faith. And those freedoms give us the ability to think a little more broadly than maybe what we did the last time we had a gathering like this or what we may need to accomplish when or where or who, any of those questions, that we have freedom that we can embrace. Does it all sound kind of complicated? Oh, good. Well, then you're the committee chair. <laughs> It sounds a little complicated to me because every time I say something, I end up backing away from the question because what could be easy to say, well, we'll do it at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning at 300 Willits and it will last for 42 minutes or whatever the spreadsheet says. Well, that might limit us a little bit. So we've thought about who, what, when, and where, but I think the key is the why and the how. Simon Sinek, who is a management consultant and a well-known speaker and author, talks about finding your why, that other details will fall into place if you understand what your why is. I want to do this because and then when you set that goal out there, other things make a whole lot more sense. If I want to get to that point, then I have to stop doing things here and I have to start moving things forward. And so what is our why? What is our why when we want to host a reunion? And I believe it's because it's our job. It is our job to be the family of God in the world and to gather that family in the best ways that we can, to share together in ways that we find encouraging and enlightening that make us better together, where we can celebrate our differences and learn from each other and come away from those gatherings in stronger, better places than we were when we got there in the first place. I think it's our job. As joint heirs, as family, and it's been said that you don't get to choose your family. Sometimes, like Henry Louis Gates tells you, turn the page and guess who you get. The surprise that you feel may be joy. It might be dread. <laughs> I've seen those episodes too. <laughs> Not him, he's horrible. Well, he's your cousin. <laughs> Not her. She's amazing and world famous. Well, she's your cousin too. As joint heirs, all of this is more than we can understand, more than we can know, more than we can explain. So we have this opportunity to explore and to connect, to learn and to celebrate, and that, well, that's our how. We want to explore beyond our current understandings, because our current understandings can be limiting. And we want to explore beyond other people's understandings and limitations. 
if you remember the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and there's multiple lists, but I think of the gifts as told to the church in Corinth, there were particular people in Corinth who could speak in tongues. And it was an amazing gift, something that I've witnessed. But the problem wasn't that they spoke in tongues in Corinth. The problem was they said, and that makes me just a little better than you, because you don't. It wasn't that they had that gift, but it was because they felt that that made them somehow better. And Paul said, no. Never dismissed their gift, but dismissed the idea that there was any superiority when the Holy Spirit blows through us, moves us, guides us, and inspires us. We go with what we have in the direction the Spirit calls us to go. That's our how. So if we embrace that, if we embrace the idea that getting everybody together will help us to be stronger and wiser, if we get together with the understanding that our freedoms will enable people to express their fears and concerns and limitations beyond our patience and ability to listen and explore and understand, then we can be a part of the union right here and right now of the beloved community. We can be a part of the building up of the body of Christ, not just as, as a faraway thing someday after life on earth has come to an end, but right now in the middle of the vital life that God calls us to. It's a lot, but let's all think about it until we come back together again. Thanks for coming, meeting adjourned. Amen.
can make me joyful Our hearts so full, so full You make me joyful Please join me in the generosity prayer in your program. Godliness with contentment is great gain. We bring nothing into this world and we take nothing out of it. We who call Jesus Lord devote ourselves to resisting greed, which plunges the human heart into ruin and pierces it with many griefs. We are determined to practice generosity with free hearts, fixing our hope on God and not the uncertainty of wealth. We desire to be rich in good deeds, willing to share all that we have, laying up for ourselves treasure that will not decay, but will shine in the age to come. May it be true of our community. Amen.
Now may the everlasting love of God overflow you and flow from you to all whom you meet. May the peace of Christ dwell in you richly. And may the power and fellowship of the Holy Spirit guide and unite us here and everywhere God calls us to be, today and forevermore. Amen.